Hello, I'm doing a movie review, and the movie I want to review is the Japanese giant monster film, or kaiju film, Gamera vs. Barugan. Now, this was released in Japan in 1966, and this is the sequel to the 1965 kaiju film, Gamera the Giant Monster. Now, the film was once again written by Nissan Takahashi, who also wrote the first film. However, this time around, the film was directed by Shigeo Tanaka, whose name I'm no doubt butchering. Now, this was released on television in North America under the title War of the Monsters. Now, this version of the film is obviously dubbed over in English, but it also cuts out, I believe, like 12 minutes of footage from the original Japanese version. This version of the film, I also believe, fell into the public domain. Now, there was another English dub of this movie released by Sandy Frank in the 80s. This is the version of the film that was later riffed on Mystery Science Theater 3000. Now, I have the original Japanese version on this DVD set, which has all the Gamera films with the exception of Gamera the Brave. And I also have the War of the Monsters version on this cheap little DVD from Alpha Video that typically puts out public domain movies, and of course I I have the MST3K episode on that box set right behind me. Now, if you saw my review on the first movie, you would know that while I respect that movie, I'm not the biggest fan of it. I think the film is okay, but it's not really one of my favorite kaiju films. Like, I respect the legacy that the film has left behind, and I respect the Gamera character, but overall, the first Gamera film is, again, I just find the film to be okay, and I honestly feel that way about a lot of the Shoha Gamera films. Honestly, as this series goes on, a lot of these Shoha Gamera films I actually find to be kind of hard to sit through. However, this one, Gamera vs. Barugan, aka War of the Monsters, this is easily the best film in the Shoha Gamera series, by far. It has a far more interesting story than the first one, and overall has far more interest in human characters than the first one did. I actually think the human story in this is arguably even more interesting than the monster stuff that happens in the film. So, the plot of Gamera vs. Barugan is it's set six months after the events of the first film. Now, the first movie ended where the governments of the world managed to trap Gamera inside of a giant rocket ship, which they launched to Mars. But in this movie, you find out that the rocket collided with an asteroid, freeing Gamera, and Gamera returns to Earth and once again threatens the human race. Meanwhile, a World War II veteran who's now involved in organized crime sends his younger brother Kazuki, along with two other men, Onidera and Kawajiri, to the island of New Guinea because when he was stationed in New Guinea during the war, he found an opal in this cave before he was taken as a POW. So, Kazuki and these two other men go to New Guinea to retrieve this opal, but when they get there, they're warned by the natives to stay away from this cave. They think the natives are just bluffing. But when they get to this cave and find the opal, one of these men, Kawajiri, is stung by a scorpion and dies. So, Onidera, who wants to keep the opal for himself, ends up betraying Kazuki and leaves him for dead. Kazuki is later found by the natives who nurse him back to health, but then they tell him, this wasn't an opal that you guys found, this was actually the egg of an ancient creature called Barugan. So, while Onidera is traveling back to Japan with what he thinks is an opal, it ends up getting exposed to infrared light, and it ends up hatching into a giant lizard-like creature called Barugan, which ends up attacking Osaka. Eventually, Gamera is attracted to this, and Gamera starts fighting this creature. So, Kazuki, who now feels guilty because he knows it was his greed that led to this horror happening, him and a woman from New Guinea named Karen now have to 
try to help the JSDF in stopping these creatures, namely Baragon. Kojiro Hanko plays the main character, Kazuki, who is a generally pretty likable character, despite the events in the film being partially his fault. But that is part of the character's arc in the movie, is him trying to redeem himself for helping to bring this carnage to Japan. Kayoko Inami plays the character of Karen, who is a likable, if not somewhat two-dimensional character. But who really stole this movie was Kochi Fujiyama as the villain Onidera, who is such a sleazebag in this movie. Like, he's a character that you just love to hate. But there are moments in the film where you almost get the idea that maybe he does regret his actions, but he's so consumed by his own greed. And that's what the film is really about. It's a film about how greed can corrupt the soul. And that's what I like about the film, because there's more of an emphasis on human drama, and the monsters are really just metaphors in the film. Metaphors for human greed. And it really does feel more in tone with the kind of kaiju films that Ashiro Honda was making. Now, Baragon is a pretty interesting monster. Like, he can freeze things with his tongue, and he also has, and I'm not making this up, killer rainbows that shoot out of his back. And I know it sounds really silly, but somehow it works in the film. Now, I do have to address sort of an elephant in the room about this character, that Toho has a very similarly named character called Baragon, who first appeared in Frankenstein Conquers the World and later got incorporated into the Godzilla series. So, some people have accused Barugon of being a ripoff of Toho's Baragon, but besides the names, there really aren't that many similarities between the two monsters. Now, what the suitmation and special effects in the movie is actually pretty good, at least for the time. Now, the one issue with this movie is Gamera really isn't in the movie that much. He actually feels more like a guest in this movie than anything else, and I know this isn't the case, but it almost feels like this was originally a standalone monster movie that they just shoehorned Gamera into. So, Gamera vs. Barugan is easily my favorite of the Shoha Gamera series, but it's not without its problems. I do think there are some pacing issues, especially towards the end. Like, there are several scenes in this movie of the JSDF going through these different plans and strategies to kill Barugan. Barugon and all of them fail, and it gets a little tedious after a while, especially when you know it's going to be Gamera who ends up killing Barugon. And there are times where the theme of greed does get a little heavy-handed, especially when you have Kazuki repeat at least, like, five times towards the end of the movie, It was my greed that did this! But despite its problems, I do enjoy this movie a lot. I think it's a really solid kaiju film, and frankly, this movie is a masterpiece compared to what's to come in the Shoha Gamera series. But that was my review on Gamera vs. Barugan, aka War of the Monsters, and bye.